Hey, what's up, guys? It's the base guy. Hey, um, so sorry I didn't do the video yesterday. I got really busy with the family and everything. But um, I'm going to talk to you guys about doing grounds. Well, I don't want to say grounds, but how to get the whining noise out your vehicle. You know how you set up your system and you get that weird noise coming from your vehicle. And it's just so irritating. You know, trust me, I've been through it. Uh, I've had my trial and error going with going through ground noise and stuff, and I'm gonna give y'all some tips on what y'all need to do so y'all can um, have a better sounding system when your vehicle is turned on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn I'm gonna turn my vehicle on so y'all can see that I don't get any noise coming from my vehicle. Of course, my amps comes on and everything. But as you see, my amps are on. My system is on right now, but there's not an ounce of noise coming from my doors or my tweeters. See? Literally zero sound, nothing. So the advice I'm giving is true. Now, how you do it, that depends on how you wire your stuff and how you do anything, right? But first things first, why do we get sound or why do we get whining noise? All right, whining noise, it comes from various things. You know, it comes from, uh, it can come from poor RCAs. It can come from poor grounds. It can come from multiple grounds. Uh, it can come from RCAs touching powers. Um, and having that signal get mixed in with the RCAs. Um, it can come from loose grounds. It can come from putting grounds in the wrong place, not having a solid ground. So many different variations, all right? But I'm going to tell you all what you all can do to make it better or at least eliminate some things, all right? So one of the biggest things, and especially with big systems, uh, when y'all are uh, wiring up your system, um, try not to have s so many grounds in different locations because that's one of the biggest problems. A lot of people they make grounds in different locations, and you have this thing called ground loops. Ground loops is when you have two or three grounds in three completely different locations, you know, and that's what causes that ground loop, and that ground loop. Uh, one of those three locations could be a bad location. Then you just have signals or you just have power dumping in three different locations. You know, and the biggest common issue is the up front up here with the alternators. Because, you know, you have dedicated, dedicated ground within the truck itself in the front on the engine. And a lot of people, when they set up their uh, system, um, they put ground at other locations. You know, so for the guys that have grounds, that's or for the guys that wire up their system to their truck, to the factory, you know, the best thing, try to put your ground to the same exact location. Even when you're doing a big three, try to keep your grounds in the same exact location. Don't try to put them anywhere else because it ties in with the uh, factory system. All right. Also, now for the guys, and this is mainly with the guys that has the big systems, like the like the system that I got, or bigger than mine. Take some note with certain things. All right, when you have a big system like this, or just any other big system, you need to make sure all your grounds are going to one source. Meaning, all your ground. Let's say you decide you want to wire to your frame. All right, all your grain, all your grounds need to go to your frame. So as y'all see right here, I have six grounds, right? Six grounds that's going to my frame directly at the bottom of my truck, right at the frame down there, right at the bottom of my truck. All right, and then I have three more grounds or four grounds. Well, actually three grounds, one ground on each alternator. Well, actually, two ground on each alternator. I got two ground on each alternator going to the same frame, same exact frame. 
All right, so I got two, four, so I got 12 rounds in total. All right, going to the same frame. That part is set. All right, another thing that I do is my radio. My radio is not even connected to my factory system because you know the positive and the negative goes to the factory vehicle. Well, I cut that. I have my positive and negative going directly to my battery, this right here. So my radio doesn't even see my factory setup. So that's an, that's one of the big things that would help. So if you have a radio, you have a big system, wire your radio to your, to your uh, aftermarket system. And like I said, I have two charging systems. I have the regular 12 volt factory system that comes with the truck. And then I got three 370s, one, two, then I got another one down there. So I have two different charging systems. This is 16 volt and this is 12 volt. So these are two completely charging systems and I have um, my system directly on a different source of charging. All right. Now, RCAs, if you go get some RCAs, make sure you get some good uh, shielded RCAs. You know, the try to get the best ones you can because they said the better the RCAs, um, the likely chance you'll have a really solid solid connection uh me i use sky high i like them i use the the shielded ones they're pretty good i like them um but yeah that's that's pretty much it you know try to have every single ground for every single piece of equipment going to your battery amps radio any other source that you have, anything negative that's that ties into your system, everything, everything that's tied to my system is going to those three batteries in the back. Nothing is on a factory part. Nothing is on a factory part. So like I say, I suggest if you're wiring up everything, all grounds go to one source, all right? Like y'all see right here, all these little red wires that you see, the little red, white, black, all these little small wires, these are things that's connected to my system. And it's all going to this. Got my 12 grounds going to one place. I even got my, sorry, got my radio going to one place. And once you do that, your sound should go away. You shouldn't even have a problem with sound anymore. Like the whole thing with the wires in between the, uh, the uh, outputs of the preamp from the deck. I've never tried it before. Well, I did try. I tried about what eight years ago, and it didn't work for me. So I'm like, I don't need to do this the right way because that's pretty much a band aid. That's pretty much all that is. It's a band aid. But if you want to get rid of grounds, or not grounds, if you want to get rid of whining noise, wire everything to your battery to your main uh, system source. And if you have a factory system, make sure that you keep your grounds in the same location. And make sure your grounds are tight. Make sure that you're not wiring your grounds to metal. Make sure your grounds aren't loose. Make sure you're not using tapping screws because those things play a factor as well. So, but make sure it's to a solid piece of metal, something that it has a good connection to. You know, no sheet metal, none of that cheap stuff that's on your truck. All right. So, like I say, I hope this helped you guys. Uh, like I say, the radio to the battery, that was like one of the key factors right there. A lot of people don't do that. They don't take the pop, uh, power in the ground from the factory and then put it to the battery in the back. All right, so try that out. Try to keep all your grounds in one place and don't have them out everywhere, different locations, and that should help you guys out. Y'all got any comments, just drop them in the box. Make sure y'all share my videos. Uh, make sure y'all leave likes for them. All right. Y'all be safe.